the receptivity, I think, was not without resentment. I don't think people wanted to acknowledge the history. Even when I was in high uh, college, I remember my professors sort of imping me and said, so you're Asian American now, huh? You know, because I was a pretty good student and they thought that that was a, an ancillary or a pen, um, a supplementary interest. And uh, they denigrated it. Um, they would say things like, oh, you have no idea what they said. You know, in graduate school, a extraordinary professor who was brilliant on American poetry said to me, so gook literature? at a faculty reception. Um, there are many moments like this. Um, it was not embraced, but I think the weight of the will of, um, let's say people of color, um, the new generations and the jouissance that they brought to the political, the layer of political activism that opened the field enhanced the receptivity. But I'm not going to say, you know, that I hear a, a lot of love and a lot of receptivity. Um, I think that the attitude is still this is a marginal history, a minimal people, and it ain't cool. It ain't it ain't the big thing, you know. Despite greatness like Maxine Hong Kingston, um, my high school classmate Karen Tayamashita. Um, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, we still got to bust a move on these, on this kind of re uh, resistance. You know, what people forget is like, early on, man, Stanley Crouch and Quincy Troop were my teachers too, you know? And later it was Robert Hayden. It was the African-American poets who put their hands on my shoulder and said, we're going to help you out. We're going to get you there. <laughs>